Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel Camvis. In this video, we are going to discuss criteria for a molecule to be optically active. For a molecule to be optically active, it should be chiral. That is, it should not be superimposable on its mirror image. For example, lactic acid. One of the isomers can be drawn like this. If we put a mirror, this will be the mirror image of this isomer. Non-superimposable on its mirror image means if we put mirror image of a molecule over it, it doesn't completely cover it. In this case, if we put the mirror image over the original molecule, we can see that these are non-superimposable. Therefore, the lactic acid is a chiral molecule. The molecule shown on the left side of the mirror has S configuration. So, it is called S lactic acid. It rotates the plane of plane polarized light towards the right. So, it is called plus lactic acid or small d lactic acid. It is also called capital L lactic acid. The isomer shown on the right side of the mirror has R configuration. So, it is called R lactic acid. It rotates the plane of plane polarized light towards the left. So, it is called minus lactic acid or small l lactic acid. It is also called capital D lactic acid. For a molecule to be optically active, it may or may not have a chiral center. For example, this biphenyl derivative doesn't have any chiral center but it is still optically active due to the presence of chiral axis. The third and the last point is that an optically active molecule doesn't have any plane of symmetry. For example, L-tartaric acid and mesotartaric acid. Both have two chiral centers, but L-tartaric acid is optically active because it has two chiral centers and doesn't have any plane of symmetry, while mesotartaric acid is optically inactive as it has a plane of symmetry that makes it a chiral. That's all in this video. Please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon if you like this video. Thank you very much for watching this video.